All right, honestly, when Sam did the evil smirk the first time I watched this, I was like, what the absolute hell? But now seeing that smirk, I want to quote Anakin Skywalker and say, This is where the fun begins. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 5 of Supernatural Season 6. Live free or try hard. I still can't believe this episode. And to start this review off, I'll have to say that the episode structure is very similar to that of I Think the Children Are Our Future from Season 5, the one with the Jesse uh, Antichrist kid. Because this episode starts about 20 minutes of it, maybe 15 minutes of it, is quite funny. It is very, very funny for a lot of it. Maybe there's a few scares here and there showing the origins of the vampires. When Dean gets turned. Sorry? <laughs> Attacked then turns that everything just changes. It goes from super funny to super serious. No! And it works way better, I feel, than the Jesse episode, kid. That had a lot of backstory going on. I feel that this one really establishes a lot of really cool ideas of what makes vampires the way they are. There's a lot of really great action in this episode, and there's also the hint at what the alpha vampire is up to. This episode does show off also a side of soulless sand that we had all been kind of alluded to, but it really comes into full effect when he comes around the corner, full on scenes Dean getting attacked and the vampire is starting to cut his wrist to infect Dean and Sam just stands there and they do that little zoom in and Jared Padalecki does that little smirk for a second. That smirk is goddamn classic. It's probably one of the first things I always think of of Supernatural past season five, that smirk. Because it's such an absolute game changer. It is a massive what the absolute fuck just happened. It just blows you away that something like this can happen and it affirms that the Sam that we have is definitely not the Sam that we knew. The Sam that has had Dean's back this whole time and Dean realizes that as well. But really Dean can't focus on that as much because he is turning into a vampire and we see the vampire structure and how it comes about and it sort of delves a little bit into what happened with Gordon back in season 3 but this one goes way more into depth with it because obviously we're terrified that Dean might turn into a vampire, that he might have to be killed. I think the idea that it was just a vampire infection made it a lot more grounded, brought a threat to the characters, to Dean at least, a lot earlier than I expected. And this feeling of dread, this feeling of oh, for our characters would obviously become so few and far between as the show would continue on. So to have that little, it does bring back investment in the show. And I have to give this episode credit for that. Also the action in this episode is really good. I love all of the brutality in this episode. There's so much violence, there's so much gore. When Dean goes to town on all the other vampires, especially when he goes at the lead singer of Coheed and Cambry, if that's the band that I'm referring to, just that hairstyle, I swear, that band just birthed this hairstyle into a, a form that everyone was wearing. Even the guy who was in Balls of Fury had that hairstyle for a while. But this is a really good one. It does do a lot of really good jokes about Twilight. And even when Dean is having that really serious moment with Lisa, when he is trying to say goodbye to her, but at the same time he is wanting to bite her, wanting to eat her. He says, oh God, I'm Pattinson. <laughs> I had to rewind that bit because like, did he just say what I thought he said? I don't know if I caught that the first time I watched. It's there and it's fucking hilarious. Combination of humor and horror, of action and laughs, and terror and dread for Dean and his future makes this a really standout episode. Sure, there's that little bit with a vampire, which I'll be honest, I'm kind of eh about because it's so random. You don't even understand why everyone falls over. It, they all just go to sleep and they get this really weird vision with the alpha vampire and the two girls from The Shining. The reference doesn't recall or make sense to me at all. And then they get up and he kills everyone. <laughs> including the Robert Pattinson wannabe guy and the Coheed and Cambry guy. But otherwise, I really like this episode. It's probably one of my favorites of this season. Obviously, Weekend at Bobby's is the standout in terms of quality, but I like this one because it gets you invested in the story through Sam. I don't care about the monsters and the monster of all crap. I don't really care about the 
battle going on in heaven because they bring it up so rarely that you don't really get enough investment in it. It's Soulless Sam. Not only for his very direct and very dark humor at times, but also for his lacking humanity and his re relationship with Dean that makes you invested in this season. Jared Padalecki is basically carrying this season on his back. I'm curious to see if it falls off as we go on. But anyways, I'm gonna give this episode a six out of seven. I'm really impressed, I enjoyed it. I was trying to do photo work, but I kept on watching the episode, so that's a good sign. But those are my thoughts about this episode, so let's see what you guys have to say. Finally at episode five, to me this is where the season picks up and becomes more entertaining. And yes, I may be biased because this is a Twilight parody episode, but goddamn, I love this shit. The episode itself is really well handled explores Sam's soulless nature and sets up the alpha vampire as a pretty cool and intimidating antagonist. Some people are annoyed by the vampire cure, but I am willing to let this one slide because it works mid-transition, unlike when Dad did it with the werewolves. This is actually a really good way to have this work. I think this is a means of being able to stop what's going on. A different example would be when they're trying to save Madison from the werewolf curse by trying to find the, the werewolf that turned her before the full moon, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work, but at least there's something there, and that's where I feel that this connection is, it works here. Lift Rio Toy Heart has an excellent hammy episode that mixes the right blend of comedy that makes fun of the Twilight series and adds a serious, understandable danger to how people implement their fiction in real life. The episode highlight is Dean portraying a vampire Vampire as well. One of my favorite moments is the, his helplessness in the vampire's nest when he sees one of the missing teenagers and he can do nothing about it. Although a vampire cure wasn't mentioned before in the earlier seasons, it's not hard to believe Samuel would know how to work one. As always, I love the season delving deeper into the alpha vampire lore, and also the alpha is telepathically connected to his children. The saddest moment of the episode is when Dean trying to visit Lisa and Ben and lashing out at them, and Sam intentionally let Dean turn into a vampire. Upon rewatch, you know why Sam's out of character does this, and what makes Rewatching it rewarding as you can tell the show's creative team did this intentionally with the first episode of the season that is debatable because the first episode of the season that they filmed was the bobby episode it's definitely one of the best sam soulless sam moments of the entire season soulless sam goes way beyond disconnected with people that he's felt since he returned from hell i call him worse than samuel who obviously has an agenda and is keeping secrets the fact that sam was would willingly let dean get turn to catch the alpha for whatever reason is probably the most horrific portrayal the brothers have ever faced in their entire relationship in the entire series. Unlike every other time that Sam has screwed up in the past, he no longer cares. He does and feel remorse. He's just cold and empty. Four out of seven. The opening makes me cringe. I think it's supposed to, but besides that, the episode is solid. In terms of soulless Sam moments, it is my favorite moment of the entire arc. Now, I last half a season. That's more than most arcs in this show can say. This is an okay episode. There are two aspects that I like. The first one was when the vampires, including Dean, all simultaneously collapse on the floor and they get a vision of the alpha vampire. The editing was great. And the other one is when Dean slaughters the entire vampire nest. However, there are aspects that I don't like. The opening scene with Kristen and Robert with the dialogue was cringy and Dean thinking it's a good idea to visit Lisa. That was dumb. Nevertheless, Sam, I can't believe he stood there and let his brother get turned. Live free or twy hard, difficult to watch. It's becoming more obvious that Sam is not Sam and yet he is Sam smiling ever so faintly as Dean gets turned. Sorry to all the Lisa lovers out there, but my god, she doesn't show a shred of concern or glimmer of understanding for Dean. Like I said, this relationship is just so hard to watch for this. This episode pisses me off because the whole episode was a direct slap to the Twilight series from the opening scene. It was interesting to see Dean become a vampire I feel really sorry for him when he went to say goodbye to Lisa. He is unfortunately right. The hunting life is a dangerous one that he has brought into, into her and Ben's life and they don't deserve it. I hate that the missing girls that turned up and the vampires are being used as a sex slave, but I did love seeing Dean kill all the vampires and the actor who played the vampire that turned Dean was married to a Shannon Elizabeth from the American Pie movies. Coheed and Camry guy was married to Shannon Elizabeth? Wow, that's a that's a strange connection there. All right, guys, thank you for your comments. Now we've got episode six, You Can't Handle the Truth. I'll admit, I don't remember this episode at all. So give me your guys' comments about that in the comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.